in in this area ठीक है second smallest atomic radius so we're looking for second smallest atomic radius and the next part he's asking for is that it has the third lowest first ionization energy in its period so the third lowest ionization energy in the period so i'm going to i'm going to open uh, our notes theek hai this is across the period which element has the third lowest the lowest one is group 1 the second lowest is this one over here that's group 3 and the third lowest is going to be group 2 then the fourth lowest would be this one carbon then fifth lowest sorry fifth lowest would be this sixth lowest so he's asking for the third lowest in a, in the period so the third lowest is going to be group 2 so we have already singled out uh, we've already singled out that the element belongs to the second period and it's going to be magnesium theek hai it's going to have the third lowest ionization energy in the period theek hai as explained so the answer to this question is going to be c it's going to be magnesium is this clear rida minahil is this clear usman is this clear as so the next one i said this one actually the starting two questions are slightly more tricky the rest ones the rest are pretty more uh, are kind of more straightforward now this question is that element x has a higher first ionization energy than element y as so this one is a tricky question so so element x has a higher first ionization energy than element y so i'm going to just write that x it's more difficult to remove electrons from x compared to y and we are trying to remove the first electron first ionization energy now two students state that they believe is one factor that it helps to explain this that why does x have a higher first ionization energy compared to y the first one says that x has a higher first ionization energy than y because an atom of x has more protons in its nucleus than an atom of y so protons the first student is saying that protons are a factor and protons are a factor that if you have more protons protons are going to attract electrons very very strongly so it's going to be very hard to remove electrons so protons is a factor so i mean it's a possible factor uh so that's one that could be one reason and student number 2 states that the reason why x has a higher first ionization energy is that x has a higher because x has a smaller atomic radius than y so that's he's talking about the distance of the electron atomic radius how far is the electron so that also makes sense that if you have a small atom it's harder to remove electrons from a smaller atom because the uh, the electron would be closer to the nucleus so it would be a very hard to actually uh remove electrons if the atom if the electron is very close to the nucleus so both factors they make sense but then the question states that only one of the students is correct so first student says that x has higher ionization energy because it has more protons the second one says that x has a higher ionization energy because it has a smaller distance the electron is closer to the nucleus so which is why it becomes more difficult to remove electrons but only one of the students is correct and he's given you four options so the first thing is now we have to check three things the three things are the first thing is we need to check whether x has a higher ionization energy than y i mean this first thing needs to be it needs to be satisfied satisfied in all the options then i'm going to look at the student number 1 and 2 one of the students must be correct So I'm going to check this first out of all the options. So you have carbon and boron. This is uh, group four. This is group uh, three. So if I have a look, uh, group four has a higher ionization energy than group three. This is what we discussed over here. That carbon and boron. Carbon's ionization energy is this one. So carbon is going to have a higher ionization energy because at boron there's a dip. So that that is true. so let's go back to the question and i mean the first thing that they stated in the question that is justified for a i said what about magnesium and aluminum 
uh, does magnesium have a higher energy energy compared to aluminium? Now magnesium and aluminium. Magnesium is group two and aluminium is group three. Remember, there's going to be a dip at group three. Okay, if you look at the sketch across the period, there's always a dip at group three. So magnesium would be over here in group two. Aluminium would have a lower ionization energy. So magnesium is going to have a higher ionization energy. So that is going to be correct as well. So magnesium in all these cases, uh, these elements have higher ionization energies. I said then oxygen and nitrogen. So let's look at oxygen and nitrogen across the period. Oxygen is group six, nitrogen is group five. So the so the first statement is not justified. Oxygen, there's going to be a dip at oxygen. So oxygen is going to have a lower ionization energy compared to nitrogen. So this, I'm going to cut this out. Because it can't be C, because the first statement that he made that X has a higher ionization energy than Y, that is not justified for option C. And then you have oxygen and sulfur. Does oxygen have a higher ionization energy compared to sulfur? So let's have a quick look. You have oxygen over here, you have sulfur over here. Oxygen, remember down the group ionization energy decreases because the electron becomes further and further away from the nucleus and more shielded as well. So oxygen is going to have a, have a lower, ha, is going to have a higher ionization energy compared to sulfur. So that statement is also true. So I'm going to, so this option, I'm removing this option. So we're left with, so I've checked the first statement and that is justified for A, B, and D. TK, is this clear so far, Hiba? Uh, Rida, is this clear? Uh, Bazra, is this clear? I said, now moving on to the next statement. Now I'm going to investigate why does carbon have a higher ionization energy than boron? So why does that happen? The reason that happens is that when you move across the period, what happens? Why does carbon, because carbon has more protons. Here, the number of protons increase. Uh, shielding remains constant, so it has no effect. And the distance of outer electron decreases slightly. The atoms become smaller and smaller as you have more protons. The shells are more attracted and the atom size slightly gradually decreases. So there are two factors, number one and number two. The shielding effect is constant, so that's not a factor. So, so there are two factors in play over here, carbon and boron across the period. Uh, so there's more protons plus distance of the electrons slightly decreases. So this cannot be the answer because the option A, I mean, the, the factors for option A, both students could be correct. That uh, carbon has more protons and because carbon is, uh, uh, the other reason was carbon has a smaller atom because it has more protons. Uh, so, the, so the shells are closer to the nucleus. So the distance slightly decreases. So option A cannot be the answer. What about magnesium and aluminum? So why is magnesium group two having, so there's going to be a dip at aluminum. So why does that happen? Uh, the reason that happens is across the period. Again, it's across the period. Remember, um, magnesium would be group two. And aluminum is going to be your group three. Across the period, you always have the same sketch. So why does magnesium have, or why does aluminum have a lower ionization energy? Or why does magnesium have a higher ionization energy? The reason is that magnesium is a smaller atom. I mean, look at group two. Group two, the electronic configuration, the subshells are fewer. Whereas in aluminum in group three, there's a 2P, there's an extra 2P subshell. So it's slightly bigger. So one reason why magnesium has a higher ionization energy is that it's, it's a smaller atom. Okay, so one of the students is justified that magnesium has a smaller atom and between magnesium and aluminum, between group two and group three, 
I had stated that it's because of the difference of the slight difference in the subshells. Like group two have fewer subshells, group three actually has one extra subshell. So it's kind of a bigger atom. So that is why group two, it's more difficult to remove electrons because it's closer to the nucleus. So that's one factor. So, so one of the factors is Mg is smaller, right? Uh, what about the other factor? Uh, does Mg have more protons? No, it doesn't actually. Aluminium has more protons. So in this case, in option B, only one of the students is correct. This was actually going against the trend. I mean, the dips were actually going against the trend. You had more, more and more protons to the right. Uh, but in the case of group two and group three, magnesium and aluminium, aluminium had more protons, but still it was easier to remove electrons because the electron was actually being removed from a subshell, which was much further away. Okay. So is this question clear to everyone? Is this clear? <coughs> so, so you're going to get, uh, I mean, it's a straightforward question, but you're going to get questions uh, phrased in a very confusing way. So okay, what's, what's wrong with oxygen and sulfur? Why is, uh, why is this wrong? Uh, the reason is, I mean, it's down the group, right? So oxygen is, uh, is a smaller atom, take a smaller radius, so more difficult to remove electrons. So, I mean, one of the students is correct that the radius is small, so more difficult to remove electrons. Uh, down the group, remember, protons was against it. Okay, if you, uh, I mean, this student can't be correct. Because if you move down the group, what did we learn about down the group? You had three factors. Two going, uh, two telling us that it would become easier to remove electrons because the distance was increasing, so the electron was becoming further and further away, and the shielding was also increasing, so it would become e much easier to remove electrons. But this was there was one factor that was going against that, and that was the number of protons. Okay, they were they were going against this. So that's so that student who was stating proton as a factor was actually going to be incorrect. So smaller, I mean, uh, just one second, let me check. Smaller radius and so that is true. This one would be incorrect. I mean, the statement would be incorrect actually. That it actually doesn't even have more protons. That's the next one. The definitions of many chemical terms can be, we can skip this one. This one is uh, not related to ionization energy, it's this one. Now, the relative first ionization energy of four elements uh, of consecutive atomic numbers. Remember, I told you that there are going to be sketches of consecutive atomic numbers. Uh, and consecutive atomic numbers are when you move across a period. Okay? So 19, 20, 21, 22, so that's consecutive proton numbers. And one thing that happens is you're going to get the same sketch the one that's given over here. TK, this is across the period. But what happens once the period is over? What happens is, and let me, which I had shown you the sketch. TK, this, I mean, you can't see this one. Let's look at this one. I said, what happens is once you move across the period, uh, the next period would start if you're going according to the atomic number. So one period is over. So rise, then there's going to be a dip at group three, then a dip at group six, and you're going to rise till neon. And after that, there's going to be the same sketch repeating, except that it's going to be slightly lower. Why would it be lower? Because you've moved down a bit. So the atom sizes are bigger, so it's actually easier to remove electrons, but the sketch would be exactly the same. I said, now, if you look at the sketch that they have given in the question over here, now, consecutive atomic number, which part of the periodic table is he sketching? It's rise, rise, and then there's, there's a huge fall. So if you compare with this, 
it's going to be this part over here right at the end i mean where where do you get the fall when you when one period is over and you move to the next period so the same sketch starts repeating again so this huge fall this is the noble gases and this is group 1 starting again so basically you so basically what happens is you move across a period you reach noble gases and then you start all over again from potassium so there's going to be a huge fall so this is going to be c is going to be group 1 then this is going to be group 2 and if i extend this there's going to be a dip then there's going to be rise rise then group 6 there's going to be a dip okay so the graph is going to repeat these are your noble gases so that's your group 18 and this is your group 17 or group 7 now he's saying one of the elements reacts with hydrogen to form a covalent compound hx we know that covalent compounds are formed by group 17 elements so it's either going to be hf or hcl or hbr whatever group 17 element he's talking about uh, so the answer would be a theek hai is this clear uspan is this clear uh, rida basga minahil acha so so remember this across a period where would you so remember this this is very important uh where is the graph like like across the period you move it rises and then the next period starts so if it's consecutive atomic number there's going to be a fall once you switch a period okay why this why is there a huge fall uh because once you reach this end there's another shell added you move to the next period and if another shell is added the electron becomes much further away and it becomes a lot easier to remove electrons so there's going to be a huge dip once you move from argon to potassium or from neon to sodium now the next question is that x is an element that has its outer electrons in the fourth principal quantum shell that means the fourth period okay the period number is the shell number and it has a higher first ionization energy than calcium calcium is in group as it is just saying that it has a higher ionization energy than calcium theek hai so it has to be in fourth period so bromine krypton xenon first thing i'm going to check whether they are in the fourth period or not so bromine krypton and i don't know where xenon is where xenon xenon is below that so so xenon is out theek hai it can't be xenon fourth period one Two, three, and this is your fourth period. So bromine and krypton. So I'm going to I'm going to take them. Xenon is out because it's not even in the fourth period. I said then the next part is that they have the higher. I mean they're saying their ionization energy is higher than calcium. So calcium is also in the fourth period. It's in the same period, but it's in group two. So it. ionization energies increase across the period so bromine and krypton are definitely going to have like bromine and krypton where's the where's the sketch bromine and krypton are right over here calcium is at group 2 over here so bromine and krypton are right at the end so their ionization energy is definitely going to be it's definitely going to be higher so the answer to this is uh the second statement is going to be correct for both of them theek hai Bazar, is this clear? Ridak, is this clear? As a next one. Okay. As I remember, I gave you, I've given you this worksheet. This contains, uh, this all, this is already in the in the WhatsApp group. Okay. So it contains. uh sub topic wise questions related to atomic structure now this one the graph below shows the variation of the first ionization energy with proton number for some I mean, so it's the same graph you move across the period then you move the next period comes across the period and this i told you these are your transition metals like if you if you i mean first period no transition metal second period no transition metal third period so you the fourth period they you get these 10 transition metals in between okay let me rub this off 
So the third, fourth period, you get transition metals. Uh, so the question is, the first one is P and X are in the same period of the periodic table. They're definitely in the, I mean, this is one period. TK, this is group one, group two, then there's dip at group three, then four, five, six, there's gonna be dip seven and eight. Uh, so P and X are definitely in different periods. That's a period lower than uh, the first period. So the first statement is definitely incorrect. Option A is incorrect. The second statement, the general increase from Q to X is due to increasing atomic radius. So, so Q to X is saying, why do, why do ionization energies increase across the period? And the answer to that is, why do they increase across the period? Why is, why is there a general trend? That the number of protons they keep increasing across the period. As you move across the period, three protons, four protons, nine protons, 10 protons. So it becomes harder and harder. The electrons get more strongly attracted. So, so the general increase from Q to X is due to, so this is incorrect. The atomic radius actually slightly decreases. I mean, and very, very slightly decreases. They have the same number of shells but due to more protons, the electrons are more strongly attracted. So this statement is also incorrect. The next one is the small decrease from R to S is due to decreased shielding, R to S. So R to S is over here. This is group one, group two, and group three. So group three, why is there a dip at group three? And the answer to that is, why is there a dip at group three? Because at group three, you have a subshell. It becomes easy to remove electrons at group three because the subshell is much further away and it's more shielded as well. And it's a higher energy subshell. So it's easy to remove electrons in group three because it's removed from a higher energy 2P subshell, which is more shielded and further away compared to the 2S subshell. So previously the subshells were closer to the nucleus and at group three, you have a subshell which is kind of further away. So it becomes harder, it becomes easier to remove electrons. So, so the small decrease is not due to decreased shielding, but due to increased so it's so it's due to increased shielding. The next part is a small decrease from U to V is due to repulsion between pair of electrons. So U to V, this is group one, two, three, four, five, and there's a dip at group six. So why is there a dip at group six? What was the answer to that? The answer to that was that if you move from group five to group six at group five, your P subshells, all the orbitals had a single electron in them. But when you move to group six, the P orbitals had two electrons in them and the two electrons would be repelling each other and there would be uh, repel, there would be mutual repulsion, which would be called spin pair repulsion. Okay, so electrons uh, are removed from a paired P orbital. So due to spin pair repulsion, it is easier to remove electrons. Uh, so the two electrons would be repelling. That's why at group six, you have a dip. It becomes easier to remove electrons. So this statement is going to be correct. The small decrease, there's gonna be a dip at group six. And why is it? Because of repulsion. So option D is correct. TK, is this clear? Minaila, is this clear? Mazga, clear? Rida, Hiba. Uh, so next one is the properties of chlorine, bromine, and the compounds are compared. So uh, group seven key, yes, sorry, need the compounds. Which property is smaller for chlorine than for bromine? Let's go short them because it's not related to Vanderbilt, leave that. Just ionization energies. So which of the elements, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, this is this is the same period. Take it across the period. Group one, two, dip at three, four, five, rise kare, six, there's gonna be a dip, seven again rising. Achha, which of the elements, I mean, out of these, has the lowest 
has a lower first ionization energy than the preceding element in the periodic table. So its ionization energy must be lower than the previous one. So uh, that's going to be aluminum. Okay, because so it's it's where is the graph? So lower than the previous one. The previous one is group two. Group three is going to be lower than the previous one. And this one, it's either group six or this one, because their ionization energies are lower than the previous one. So that's uh, so it's so it's uh, it's group three or group six. The uh, they conduct electricity. So this is a non-metal, it doesn't conduct electricity. So, so we've got two things right for aluminum. And it has a lower atomic radius than the preceding element in the pure table. Uh, has a lower atomic radius. So it does have a lower atomic radius. Why? Because we just saw that across the period, the atomic radius slightly decreases. So the elements to the right, uh, they have because they have more protons, electrons are more attracted. So the so across the period, uh, the atomic radius slightly decreases. So the elements to the right would have a smaller atomic radius than the elements to the left preceding element. You get the one before them. So this statement is also correct. Like aluminium is going to have a smaller atomic radius than the one preceding it. So the answer to this is aluminium. Clear a buzz guys this clear. Uh yes or no jadi select though. I said our next one. He's saying what would be the formula of the chloride of X? First thing, which group is it in? Now this question is related to successive ionization energies where you're trying to remove electrons from the same atom. Right, so, so how did you, how did successive ionization energies work? You're trying to remove electrons from the outside. These, the first six, one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six ionization energies would be low. And then all of a sudden, when you're trying to remove the seventh electron, which is very close to the nucleus, there's going to be a huge jump. And there were reasons for that jump. Why? Because the distance all of a sudden decreases, shielding decreases because the, Electron is very close to the nucleus. And every time there's a net positive charge that's increasing, there's a net total charge that's increasing, which makes it harder and harder to remove electrons. So coming back to the question, where is the jump? Removing the first electron is easy. Removing the second electron is not very difficult. Not, I mean, so there's a general trend. Removing the third electron is kind of easy. Fourth electron kind of easy. I mean, there's a gradual increase. Then all of a sudden, after you've removed the fifth electron, removing the sixth electron, there's this huge jump. So that indicates that the atom had a total of five electrons in its outer shell. The sixth electron was actually in the inner shell and it was actually very difficult to remove this electron. So, five electrons in the outermost shell. And if it has five electrons in the outermost shell, that means it's in group five. And how many bonds does a group five? Uh, group five needs three electrons, so it forms three bonds. So if it's nitrogen, uh, if it's bonding with Cl, it's gonna be NCl3. So, so this is going to be the formula of the, of the chloride of X. Hiba Rida, is this clear? Mirai, is this clear? Was one clear? Now, next one. Which of the following influence the size of the ionization energy of an atom? So, um, I mean, there are five factors actually, which we studied. I mean, what, what are the five factors? Proton numbers? the atomic radius or the distance of electron from the nucleus, the shielding effect, and the total effective nuclear charge or the net positive charge in the whole thing, and the subshells, which weren't really an important factor. They just showed up in one or two cases. So the amount of, so the first one is correct, shielding. 
Second one is the charge on the nucleus. That's also correct. Or the nuclear charge, number of protons. And all three are correct. Okay, so the distance also matters. Now this, I, this is a repeat. So we'll skip that. I said this question. Uh, this question requires a bit of inorganic. Uh, so he's, he's trying to plot melting points with respect to first ionization energies. Uh, for magnesium, aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus. So it's, uh, it's group two. Three, four, and five. TK. So, so what I'm going to do is, you know, across the period, you know what the graph looks like from group two onwards. So from group two onwards, it's going to look like this. There's going to be a dip, group two, then three, then four, and then five. So I'm going to sketch the graph of ionization energy first. Okay, this one is also a tricky question. So this is group two, group three, four, and there's five. Take a phosphorus. I'm going to write the elements as well. Magnesium, aluminium, silicon, and phosphorus. So this is how the graph looks like, right? Uh, group two, then dip at group three, then four and five. And since you haven't studied melting points, I'm going to give you the graph of the melting points as well. So you have Mg, Al, Si, and phosphorus. So Mg is metallic, Al is also metallic, silicon is giant covalent, so it has this huge melting point. And you have phosphorus, which has really low melting points. So I've, I've already, I've told you, this is the sketch of the melting points. TK, you haven't done this. This is inorganic chemistry, uh, but I've given you the sketch. Now they're asking us to plot the melting point against the ionization energies. So how would the, how would the graph look like? So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to check the ionization energies. So according, according to the ionization energy data that I've plotted, which one has the lowest ionization energy? So it's, uh, it's aluminum, like it's Mg, then aluminum, there's gonna be a dip. So aluminum should have the lowest ionization energy. So if you plot aluminum on this axis, aluminum should be plotted, it has the, so aluminum should be the first one. So, I mean, ignore the upward direction, focus on this direction. So this, is incorrectly plotted. Like aluminum over here, the ionization energy of aluminum, it's in group two, it should have been the lowest. In, sorry, in group three, it should have been the lowest. Okay, let me, this is aluminum. Achha, so it must have been the, it should have been the lowest, which it, which it isn't. This graph looks fine. I mean, it's, I mean, look at the ionization energy trend. Look, look at the whole of it. So aluminum should be the lowest. So aluminum is right on the left side. So that makes sense. TK, don't look at the graph in the upward direction. I'm not focusing on the melting points first. So aluminum is fine. What comes after aluminum? Then it's going to be magnesium. So the second one is magnesium. TK, let me bring the elements down. I said, then after magnesium, uh, it should be silicon and phosphorus is going to have the highest, group five is going to have the highest ionization energy. So this arrangement looks fine. Aluminum, magnesium, silicon, phosphorus. So this one is also incorrect. Aluminum, magnesium, silicon, and then phosphorus. Okay. Is this part clear so far? Mirail, is this clear? Usman, is this clear? Reda, Baska? I said, now I'm going to focus on the other side, the other axis. Take it now in this direction. Take it now I'm going to focus in, the, in that direction. Uh, so who has the lowest melting point? It's phosphorus, right? So on the vertical axis, you have melting points. Phosphorus should be right at the bottom. 
सो दिस मेक्स परफेक्ट सेंस बट द थिंग वॉज ये तो पहली गलत था ठीक है आई मीन दिस पार्ट वॉज रॉन्ग एंड दिस वन वॉज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग ठीक है बिकॉज ऑफ द आइडेंटेशन एनर्जी सो वी कैन फोकस ऑन दीज टू सो फॉस्फर्स शुड बी राइट एट द बॉटम ऑन द वर्टिकल स्केल फॉस्फर्स शुड बी राइट एट द बॉटम बिकॉज फॉस्फर्स हैज द लोएस्ट आइडेंटेशन एंड सिलेक्ट शुड बी एट द टॉप ठीक है सो दिस इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज सिलेकॉन इज नॉट एट द टॉप सो फॉस्फर्स शुड बी एट द बॉटम एंड सिलेकॉन शुड बी ऑन द वर्टिकल स्केल ठीक है विच विच इज द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट स्केल सिलेकॉन शुड हैव बीन एट द टॉप एंड फॉस्फर्स शुड हैव बीन एट द बॉटम सो ऑप्शन सी इज डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली करेक्ट सो ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट सो डिड यू डिड यू गेट दिस क्वेश्चन ठीक है इट्स अगेन अनदर ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन Is this clear? Rida, is this clear? Heba, is this clear? Minahil. Acha. Now the confusing part is remember that uh, when you're trying to do this question, you have to do this question in one minute, and uh, and you have to prepare for the entire chemistry. Right now, we just studied atomic structure, so everything about this is fresh. ठीक है, so imagine this in the paper. So you would have to practice a lot. ठीक है, you have to practice a lot of past papers. Um, and you're going to get all sorts of tricky questions. ठीक है, it's uh, it's I mean, most people they're they're good with chemistry, but but trying to solve questions like these in one minute that that is what where the mistakes are. So you have to be quick. You have to practice a lot. Take it in. Remember, in A levels, unlike O levels, you would be always short of time. You'll be getting these tricky questions, especially in MCQs, and you'll be short of time. And you would have to uh, be using. I mean, in this question, you would have you're using different concepts, right? So. so you have to put all those concepts together to answer this question as so we're going to do one last question which is which is the this is easier i think why is the second ionization energy of sodium larger than the second ionization energy of uh, magnesium as so now the trick in this question is that he's not talking about the first he's talking about the second so if i look at sodium sodium has two electrons eight electrons and one electron so if you're trying to remove the second electron i mean that means you've removed the first electron the second electron is very close to the nucleus so what about magnesium magnesium has a total of 12 electrons so that's 2 8 and 2 so if you're trying to remove the second electron the second electron would be removed from a shell that would be very far away so the two factors one is well, why is the second ionization energy of sodium larger because you are all of a sudden removing an electron which is very close to the nucleus plus it's less shielded as well so two factors less shielded and close to the nucleus or you can call it the distance is smaller theek okay, hai so when you are trying to remove the second electron shell has changed in the case of sodium but not in the case of magnesium you're removing the second electron still from the outer shell so which one is correct the outer electron of na plus what is more shielded no it's not shielded uh, because it's very close to the nucleus the attraction between the nucleus and the outer outer electron is greater i mean this is obviously correct um that the attraction between sodium and the outer electron in na+1 so this one it's definitely greater because it's closer to the nucleus than in mg+1 because the electron is much further away all the other statements are therefore incorrect theek hai so we're going to continue with this we're going to do a few more questions then we're going to move towards chemical bonding next week theek hai चले ये अब हम कंटिन्यू करते हैं इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस आस्क मी ठीक है व्हाट आर यू अलाउड टू लीव द क्लास ओके टेक केयर अल्लाह हाफिज़